So you want to check what state you're in and what the laws are regarding 5G and small cell facilities, and also connect with local groups to see what they are doing and what the strategy is to ensure a safer communities. So let me show you some pictures of some of these uh, quote unquote small cells that are being put in, in front of uh, close to where we live, work and play. So here is a antenna on a street light. Here's um, an antenna as well. They might be on street lights. This is from New Orleans. Um, another image of right in front of a home. These are in New York City. I'm going to be talking about New York City. A lot is going on in New York City right now on this issue. So you'll often see this kind of image, right? You'll, um, I think it's quite noticeable, but some people say, well, this is getting it to look, you know, as part of the architecture of the street. Um, and this is an image from the, the New York City um, Information Technology and Telecommunications uh, Department. This is an image from a study by some top experts in the world uh, looking at measuring the radiation from these kinds of installations. So here you have a street light, and they, they put these colors to represent the intensities of what is coming out. So you can sort of see where there is a, a main beam, the darker colors um, coming out, and then it gets less uh, still very much there, but not as much as in the main beam. And of course, if you have a building right next door to one of these and there are windows, that's closer exposure and a higher level of exposure. So we are getting these all across the United States. Here's another image of one going up in a neighborhood. Um, here is what it used to look like, for example. They take the street lights, they make them taller, they put an antenna on top, they have their equipment boxes. And there is a large, ever-growing body of science indicating not only that safety is not assured, but indicating links to numerous health issues. Uh, I do not have time to go over all of them, so I'm just going to briefly talk about them. As an example, if you want to find a recent review of the research on uh, cell towers and, and mobile phone base stations. You can read an article by uh, Alfonso Balmori, where he did a review of the latest studies on uh, people living near cell towers and found the majority, 73.6%, showed effects on the health of the people, 73.9% radiofrequency sickness. So there are uh, symptoms that were reported from headaches to, to brain fog, to um, issues with sleep, with memory, rashes, um, which is often called a microwave illness or electromagnetic sensitivity. There are a lot of terms that are used to this constellation of symptoms that are reported. Uh, and we are contacted all the time. They share, people share with us that picture of the window, the cell tower, and they say, I'm having headaches, I'm getting sick. What, what do I do? How do I fix this? Um, so radio frequency sickness is, a, is also a term used. 76.9% um, cancer, 75% changes in biochemical parameters. And there's a lot of studies where they've looked at um, changes in the blood uh, as well. So here is a picture of a cell installation of 5G. It's called Link 5G going up in New York City. And I'm going to come back to this, but I just wanted to share with you how the hubris of the industry in terms of what's happened now, they are putting these gigantic 32 foot poles up. They have one, two, three, four, five tiers for antennas. And there are many uh, communities waking up to this issue because they do not want these big gigantic cell tower poles in their neighborhood. And uh, here's an example of one. There are now 15 New York community boards. Those are uh, neighborhoods are the neighborhoods in New York City are divided into community boards and they vote. They have things to say about various uh, equipment in their communities and whatever's going on in their communities. Uh, they are the voice of the community. And then they they present that to the elected officials and 15 have passed resolutions. Uh, 
or moratoriums or disapprovals or rejections of these 5G towers in various capacities. And you can just search uh, New York City 5G to read some of the articles that are coming out on that. The effects that have been found are, are far reaching. And one of the things that, um, so I have been speaking to many community boards in New York City, and I present the uh, EMF scientist appeal. And you can go online to read that. The scientists who have signed onto this appeal uh, are calling for a halt to um, if intensification of uh, this antenna placement and for policies to reduce exposure not to increase exposure. And these are scientists that have published in the field of electromagnetic radiation, of non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation. 258 scientists from 44 nations who've published in the field. And please go to the EMF scientists appeal and take a look at uh, the, the experts and the appeal and the letters that they've sent to the United Nations. Uh, they say effects include increased cancer risk, cellular stress, increase in harmful free radicals, genetic damages, structural and functional functional changes of the reproductive system, learning and memory deficits, neurological disorders, and negative impacts on general well-being in humans. So there are thousands of studies that have found effects associated with exposures in humans, in animals, and also studies done at you know in, in petri dishes and looking at cells and how cells change and yet we are being just bombarded with these these images one more thing i mean we are in love with our phones as a society and blinded by by the advertising and it's it's nonstop so people often think that because they haven't heard anything about it that there's not a problem. But in fact, there is uh, so much to say about the science. So in 2011, the International Agency for the Research on Cancer classified radio frequency non-ionizing electromagnetic fields as possibly carcinic to humans. So this is now over a decade ago. And that was because of studies on, uh, well, they were, they looked at animal, human, and cell studies, but there were links between associations between people who use cell phones for long term when they had the cell phone near the head that developed uh, brain cancers and tumors on the side of the head where they used the phone when they used it heavily for long term. Heavily was defined in these studies as over 30 minutes a day, long term over 10 years. And there was a, a higher risk for, for these cancers. So what they didn't have at the time, and one of the reasons that the expert group that convened uh, for with the International Agency for Research on Cancer, one of the reasons that they didn't classify it as um, proven or probable, which would be the next two levels, was because there wasn't animal research that had been done, adequate animal research uh, that also found an association. So you need those experiments where you have highly controlled exposures to really show like, you know, to, cause you have your human studies, but there's so many variables with people, right? I mean, um, you know, what our occupation is or other exposures and so forth. But when you have animals in highly controlled experiments, you can really have, uh, you, you can really see, you can control for what those exposures are. And so the, over the last decade, there have been much, uh, just, just a significant amount of research that has been published since 2011, continuing to associate uh, radio frequency radiation with cancer. And I'll highlight the National Toxicology Program $30 million study that had uh, rats and mice and expose them to levels of cell phone radiation that you would receive, like when you hold the phone to your head, that intense level throughout their whole body. And they found increased tumors, the same, um, the same kinds of tumors as have been found in humans exposed to cell phones for long-term. That's since 2011. And because of that research and because of additional studies by the Italian Ramazzini Institute, 
where they used even lower levels of radio frequency than the U.S. National Toxicology Program, they found the same uh, tumor types in the male rats. So now there are many scientists who are saying that the term, that the classification uh, possibly carcinogenic is no longer adequate, that it is either probable, which is a level that would trigger regulatory change or proven. Several scientists, including environmental health trust scientists have published the scientific documentation that now the criteria has been met. The scientific evidence is robust enough to classify radio frequency radiation as carcinogenic to humans. Uh, and if the International Agency for Research on Cancer were to meet again and look at all of the science, that this would be their, the classification. Now, they haven't met since 2011. They have been advised to have a meeting to relook at the science, but they have not at this point. There's also research showing impacts to the brain, memory damage, behavior problems, hyperactivity. And that's in impacts to the brain have been found in various uh, studies and laboratories across the United States. This image you're seeing is looking at uh, brain cells that were uh, not exposed and then exposed. Research has found damaged brain cells in animals exposed as adults and prenatally. Impacts to the blood-brain barrier have been found. <music>